Ina PI brought to you by Digikey and Ada Fruit. This week it's Texas Instruments Lady Ada. What is this week's Ina PI? Okay. This week's Ina PI, I actually was like excited about this because um, this is the DRV 8411. It's a series of new motor driver chips from TI. And I love their driver chips for motors. Um, it's available in both QFN and TSOP uh, power package, PWP package. Um, right now, Digital only has the QFN in stock, but the TSOPs, I'm assuming, are coming soon. Uh, so this is the this is a series, the DRV 8410, 11, and A motor drivers. These are small, dual bridge motor drivers. There's two full H bridges. Um, they're low voltage, so they're designed uh, 1.6 volts to about 11 volts DC. And they can drive two uh, brushed DC motors or one um stepper motor bipolar or you know you can probably also drive a unipolar but it's designed for bipolar usage and it's a uh a powerful driver that is drop-in replaceable you can see it's pin pin compatible with the drv 8833 8833c which is, is lower power version as well as a couple other similar chips the 8847 and the ones in the family the drv uh 8410 and 8411 um, they've got really low on resistance of only 400 milliohms. Uh, they've got, you know, again, low power, but wide supply range, 1.5 to 11 volts. You can use, uh, you know, logic levels down to 1.8. So, you know, you've got something running on two AA batteries. It'll work fine up to four amps peak, which is quite a bit, although we'll chat about, uh, some of the constraints of doing that. Um, and particularly, I like this because this is pin compatible with the DRV 8833. Uh, which we have a breakout for. Um, it's a very popular motor driver chip, and we use it in a couple of different of our designs, not just the breakout, but also um, the Cricut. Now, if you're wondering, what were we doing about 10, uh, 10 about one year ago? Um, well, May 26, 2022, we had a post for the chip shortage. We did a series um, on this video show called Chip Shortage, where we basically uh, begged for chips because we couldn't get them. And one of the chips I really wanted was the DRV8833. Um, we did eventually get them. I don't know whether it's because we did this video asking very much if we could get an allocation. Yeah, <laughs> there is someone, I think it was on like Hacker News, or, and they, they're they like influencers. We're not influencers. They're influencers begging for chips online. That's right. We did. We will do anything to get chips we could get yeah. uh, components. They were half right. We were begging for chips, but I don't I don't think we uh, influenced much. Okay. Well, it's a very funny video. You can go yeah. back and watch it. Uh, we did those almost every week. Uh, so the the DRV 8833, which is here, is shown our a breakout board. Uh, you can see it's driving a bipolar stepper motor, four pins, and again, you can also drive uh, two DC motors. I like that it's just like a general purpose kind of use it for anything motor driver, which I like. A lot of motor drivers are like only steppers, or only bipolar, or only unipolar, or only one H bridge. But this is like you drop this in, it can do a lot, and it's inexpensive. It's only about a dollar. Um, so the the DRV 88844, the DRV 8411 uh, and the 8410 is kind of the next generation. So this shows you, you know, the TI, this is their um, portfolio. As the RDS on, the resistance of the built-in h bridge goes down. You can do higher peak current. Uh, you have less power dissipation issues. More power is going from your power supply to the motor. So you can see the um, 8411, the big upgrade from the 8847 and 8833 uh, is much lower voltage support so you can go down below two volts and much higher peak current the 8847 can go higher voltage but you know if you don't need to go above 11 um then these chips will do quite a good job for you um they're very simple again unlike some stepper motor drivers you know you control the individual h bridge inputs uh you get uh, four inputs that you will PWM. And so if you want to do micro stepping, um, you would actually PWM them to micro step. If you're just doing half or full steps, you can just uh, GPIO toggle the pins up and down. Um, there's false information. So you know if you've reached the current limiting and you can also put it into sleep mode. Um, there's also the AI SEN and uh, BSEN resistors. You can see those um, on the side. We'll talk about those. Those are the current limiting. Um, but basically you've got brushed 
motors, two of them, pop them on, step motor, pop them on. Good to go. And this is just a simplified uh, version. It does the current regulation and protection for you. Of course, it's got the, the built-in flyback uh, diode, so it's very easy to use. You just power it, give it a couple of passive components, and you're ready to rock. Um, so there's three variations of this device. Uh, the 810, the, sorry, 8410, 8411, 8411A. Um, the 8410 is um, the, kind of the, the most similar to the DRV8833 in current limitations and it's also pin to pin compatible, which I really like. You can just drop this in place. Um, the 8411A is kind of interesting in which it updates um, from using external feedback resistances to um, using a current mirror, which we'll talk about in a bit, which is quite nice. Uh, the 8411, 8411A, basically, basically, you know, do you need pin-to-pin -pin compatibility with the old chips? Use the 8411. If you don't need exact drop-in compatibility, I recommend going for the 8411A, which is the NPI I'm actually picking, because again, you can reduce your uh, board build material footprint by using the current mirror uh, capabilities. Also, if you need like a really big motor, it does have parallel uh, support. You tie A and B inputs together, and then you tie the A and B outputs together. So you can like have a very powerful output for a single motor. Obviously not for a stepper motor, just for one brush motor. However, uh, you know, like we said, it's got four amps output. You do have to figure out what is the power dissipation. You have to think about it, um, especially when you're dealing with four amps peak. If you're doing four amps just once in a while for a second or two just to turn a motor to move something maybe you're good to go but if you're actually turning it on for a significant amount of time you will have to calculate your power dissipation and since these are surface mount chips not through hole where it's really easy to like attach a you know if it's a to220 you can easily attach a heat sink heat sinking is not as easy you could heat sink with the copper uh pad the copper ground plane on your um circuit board we'll chat about that in a second you might have to use also a little miniature heat sink or forced air to um, get air around to, to remove the heat from the chip. Um, you know, looking at the PWP TSOP versus the QFN, um, they have very similar uh, resistances, but um, the QFN is going to be a little bit better just because it's got, um, sorry, it's going to be a little bit worse because it's smaller. The TSOP has a nice big, uh, heat sinking pad on the bottom you will have to of course connect that to your gigantic ground plane for this dissipation and then calculate exactly um, how big of a plane you need don't forget to add plenty of vias underneath that thermal pad it's not optional usually that's a mechanical pad in this case it's a heat sinking pad um they do have a lot of graphs in the data sheet to check out you basically it looks like you really want to have two ounce copper you can get away with two layer um, well, the four layer will improve, but two ounce copper on the outer layers will improve your heat sinking. Um, again, you're only using the, the motor here and there, maybe you can get away with it, but the moment you're um, turning it on for more than 10, 20 seconds um, or more than 50% duty cycle, you'll have to think about this. There's also micro, micro heat sinks. Um, you know, the TSOP, I think you can use some thermal paste, put this on. Will it work? Um, you know, there's no heat sinking you know, the ambient uh, heat sink at the top is not going to be nearly as good as the bottom. So what you might want to do is actually have the heat sink on the back of the PCB. You expose the um, ground plane, expose the copper, you know, have it uh, coated with Hassel or ENIG, but still it's open and then you can attach the heat sink there. So you heat sink through the bottom, not through the top of the chip. Uh, so the A version, which I mentioned, the 8411A, um, does away with this uh, annoyance so normally you have these big power resistors in there using they're, they're the current limiting so you put them on so you can limit the amount of current if you don't need four amps you don't want to accidentally pull four amps if the motor stalls or shorts you put these resistors in and they are actually in line with the h bridge so you have to connect them to ground for the current to go th through the motor and then through these resistors However, because they're dissipate, you know, they they have to pull that full one, two, or four amps through them. They need to be really big um, to handle the heat dissipation because they have a 0.2 volt drop through them, um, and uh, that's a little bit annoying because you can see they're quite big, and you do have to um, think about the thermal ramifications of having these current sense resistors that have quite a bit of uh, current through them, and also they're just kind of chunky and expensive. Um, so the A version of this chip does away with that and said there's a 
a current mirror inside and so there's a transistor inside that's going to do the, the dissipation for you hopefully there's even a multiplier maybe so you don't have um you know that 0.2 volt drop and in exchange on the output you've got uh what is called a a prop i and b uh, prop i the um maybe propagated current limit or current mirror limiting i don't know you still need resistors but they don't need to dissipate the power they're not in the power path so you'll still need you know 0.2 ohm resistors but it can be 0603 or 0402 um really helps reduce the amount of uh board space you need and of course you can use that more for your heat sinking grand plane available on digigay they are in stock five thousand of each the a and non-a qfn type um, I'm definitely going to uh, pick some up and do a breakout board. You can see the pricing over here um, under a buck. So they're price compatible with the DRB8833, um, but many improvements. Definitely recommend people check these out and maybe uh, transition your designs. If you're doing revision, uh, this could be a long-term solution. And that's on MPI. Hi, on MPI.